Hi, Nat Richards from Total Migration here again, and again, this is Gavin Stocks. This video, rather than introducing us overall, we wanted to break down a little a bit about the uh, really difficult migration cases that we specialize in looking into, put a little bit more meat on the bones about some of this stuff, and, uh, and hopefully try to put a little bit more uh, understanding into uh, people's hands, a little bit more power in their own situation before they reach out and consult with us directly. So before getting to that, a little bit about us. Um, aside from Text on the Move, which I've spoken about in other uh, videos that Gavin and I have run for quite a long time, uh, aside from Totem Migration, um, Gavin, of course, is a registered migration agent, so he's got years and years and hundreds and hundreds of cases under his belt, uh, worrying about people from all over the world with totally different circumstances and totally different visas and from all different uh, backgrounds. Uh, I am a, a very experienced consultant. I've spent years and years working with people, again, from all over the world, worrying not just about what visas they're going to, uh, to use to come here, how they're gonna do it, what their situations might be, but also much more practical concerns around um, their lives and, and what they want uh, out of the future. On top of that, and probably of more value to people uh, out there who might be watching us talk right now, previous to that, uh, I was uh, I spent a long time being a professional nerd at university. Uh, I went all the way through an undergraduate degree uh, into honours and then finally into PhD study uh, in humanities. Uh, modern history was my main thing, uh, but uh, international affairs and politics uh, are, are both uh, things that I've spent an awful lot of time studying as well. So not only does that mean uh, that I've got a pretty good base of knowledge about all sorts of international um, concerns in, in the broadest possible sense, uh, I'm also uh, quite an experienced and successful uh, persuasive writer. Uh, so a lot of the, the work that Gavin is going to break down for us now uh, that we specialize in requires an awful lot of submission writing and uh, it's with um, uh, some consultation with our clients and Gavin, of course, um, that, uh, that I'm, I'm able to help out there to the best effect. Great. So we've put together this um, definitions or glossary, if you like, of this um, migration industry jargon that you will come up against. And if ever you have had any correspondence with the Department of Home Affairs, when you do uh, receive re correspondence from them, quite often they write in this jargon, which may mean very little to you. Um, this, the purpose of this video is so that if we're going to consult with you, you have an understanding in layman's terms what all that means so that we can uh, get a bit of a, give you a bit of a leg up on how we can assist you. So I'm going to rattle off um, half a dozen of the most common um, terms, if you like, jargon, um, of things where you may trip up uh, when making visa applications and what they mean. So let's start with a PIC 4020 waiver. Um, so PIC stands for Public Interest Criteria and 4020 is the code that the government uses. Essentially, it is their integrity clause. So if the, the government deems that you've answered a question incorrectly or if you've given them what they consider to be a, a document that's not genuine uh, or if you, they consider you haven't disclosed something, whether intentionally or not, they may hit you with this PIC 4020. There is an option to get a waiver uh, for a PIC 4020, but it does require a strong submission, strong argument put together as to why you should be granted that waiver. Uh, and the important thing is that if we don't, uh, un if we're unsuccessful at getting that waiver granted, PIC 4020 can hang around for up to 10 years, which can prevent the grant of future visa applications. So it's a nasty one. So that's the first one. Uh, the second one we're gonna talk about is a health waiver. Health waivers are, let's say you have a pre-existing health condition, and you've applied for a, a certain visa that permits a health waiver, um, it may well be that we have an opportunity to present uh, to the government why you should be uh, considered uh, for the grant of that visa, despite the fact that your pre-existing health condition is going to uh, weigh on our welfare system. So essentially by being, granting that visa, you're gonna come on board onto our welfare system, which is gonna be a cost to the government. So uh, health waivers are a very complex part of, uh, of migration law. We've been very successful uh, with some health waivers in the past, uh, but they, they do require strong submissions behind them. And we should point out with that, that of course, if you're uh, in a position where you're looking for a particular visa outcome for a visa you haven't even lodged yet, and you know that this is likely to impact you, better you do something about it sooner rather than later. Absolutely. Uh, it may be something as simple as uh, you've already had a, regrettably had a visa refusal and you need representation at the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. We certainly wouldn't recommend um, doing that uh, self-represented and that, that's self-explanatory that we can assist you in understanding exactly how you got there and uh, what we have to do to get the best outcome for you. Um, 
The government will also refer to something called a NOIC, or a Notice of Intention to Cancel. So that is where you are already an existing visa holder, but for some reason the department is considering cancelling your visa. So that might be that you haven't, um, or they believe you, you haven't been abiding by the conditions of your visa, um, or perhaps you've committed a crime of some, some sort. So before the government moves to cancellation, they would first um, write to you with their notice of their intention, and we would have an opportunity to respond to them. Uh, a Schedule 3 waiver is another common um, uh, area that you could be impacted by. So Schedule 3 usually is impacted if previously uh, you have been illegal in Australia for a number of days, or if you've had some kind of visa refusal um, that has uh, essentially found left you uh, on, on a bridging visa, having to leave Australia. So Schedule 3 can prevent you from uh, being granted uh, another visa um, altogether, depending on what uh, what happened in the past. So, so it's one where we really need to understand in depth what, what's gone on in the past. We also need to be able to prove um, that whatever mistakes happened um, were not uh, directly related to yourself, that you just didn't get round to it, you became illegal uh, for reasons that were outside of your control. Uh, and there's also going to be compelling and compassionate reasons, so that's one that we can, uh, we can advise you on. Last but not least, uh, Section 48 bar. Section 48 is a part of the Migration Act, uh, whereby if you've had a visa refusal while standing on Australian soil and whilst being a holder of a bridging visa and not a substantive visa, then you could be affected by, or you, you are affected by Section 48, which can prevent you from applying for certain other visas uh, without actually first leaving Australia. Um, this is a particularly nasty uh, part of the Migration Act right now when we have closed borders because anyone impacted by Section 48 uh, is unable to leave, uh, potentially, uh, with, with limited flights and things outside Australia. So certainly having a strategy about having, how to navigate that, that complex part of the Migration Act, Section 48, is absolutely critical um, in, in working out a, a solution for the long term for you. So they're the main areas of jargon. Yeah, there you go. Hopefully you've made it through that uh, seven or eight minute attention span test. Um, all pretty heavy stuff, but at the end of the day, uh, we're very committed to breaking this down, of course. And, and whilst that guide hopefully is useful, everyone's situation is different and uh, we'd like to help you understand exactly what you need to know to get through that stuff. So if you think we can help, please don't be shy in reaching out. Uh, our website is the easiest way to get hold of us. You can jump on there. It's totemmigration.com.au. Uh, and uh, you can email us directly or call us up, of course. Our phone numbers are all over the place. Hope to hear from you soon. Great, thanks.